getting back to the office today, and when I say office, office, obviously I mean my my home office. Getting back today, I didn't have much, um, I, I, I guess, much creative spark. I, I really wasn't feeling too much uh, about writing a new section. I wasn't really feeling, you know, up to adding any new words today. So what I did instead was I ended up going through and making just edits to the chapters that I had written previously over the past several days. Um, so as you'll see in the video here, you'll see me going through and just rewriting whole sentences and deleting whole sections um, and whole paragraphs um, of, of line, just mostly because I, I, I'm just doing kind of a complete overhaul with a lot of these edits. Uh, it, it's never fun to do that, but one of the things that <clears throat> is very, very helpful to know is that it's only the final product that matters. It's only it's only the the very last thing that that you do that matters. So, you can write a hundred bad drafts, and as long as that hundred and first draft is amazing, then that's all it's going to matter because that, that that's all anyone's ever going to see. the 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 people that are going to be your readers, they're never going to see all of the bad sections. They're never going to see you know the the terrible the terrible writing or the, the, the off sentences or the off drafts. Um, you'll, you'll notice what I put up the other day when I was talking about the, the return key technique. You'll notice that section that I wrote, that I put on there, was not particularly good at all. It, it was a pretty bad, I wouldn't say bad, but it, it, yeah, it, it was just a bad section. It, it needed some work. It needed to be a little bit of revision there. Now, I'm obviously someone that talks about a lot about being very conscious about what you put down, being very aware of, of what you're running, not just putting down, you know, the first thing that comes into your head, not just um, relying on like supportive sentences, which are just sentences that, that you write, but don't really say anything. They're, they're, they're sentences that don't have any kind of real staying power, any kind of pizzazz to them. They just, they're just sort of there to support the other sentences that you've written before. They're, they're basically needless. They're very passive and very needless. So I, I've talked about those things before, but in all honesty, like as you saw with my thing, I mean, e even with that mentality, even with the you know trying to write very very strong in your first go around, you're still gonna have tons of stuff to fix. I mean, it's done, you know, tons of bad stuff is still in there, and <clears throat> what tends to help, what can be very beneficial, is just knowing that. You know, even though you, you try your best to make, make make your first pass really good, it doesn't matter how bad it is because ultimately you're going to be able to fix it and no one's ever going to see that. The only reason I even talk about writing a really good first draft is just because unfortunately one person is going to see your bad draft and that's you and most likely you as the author, you as the writer – you're not going to necessarily want to make the changes or, or you're not going to be as inclined to, to make drastic changes to your piece. You're probably going to, to keep the formation of how you wrote your story the same. You're not, you're not going to you know, take an entire chapter and overhaul how you wrote it. You're probably just going to fix what's already there and the, the shape and the direction that you've, you've written your story is going to remain, which is the problem because it which is, kind of ties into the problem that I've talked about before which is, you know, writing very quickly and, and coming up with, with an okay, you know, wet way of telling your story, that's, that's going to be the thing, thing that you're going to retain. You're not going to necessarily go through and just reshape the entire thing by rewriting all of your sentences, all of your paragraphs, and keeping just a few good gems. Most people, that doesn't happen. So that's why I say if you're conscious the first time about what you're putting down, it makes the process of revision a little bit easier when you go through a second time because you can kind of keep a lot of the similar shape that you that you put down the first in, in the first draft, rather than using the first draft as this, this very rough outline and then having to redo everything again or being very lazy and not redoing that draft and just sticking with a, you know a sort of meh okay book that's just been polished and edited for grammatical um, you know grammatical changes you know it's it's so technically it, it's correct grammatically there's no errors but the story doesn't really say what you want it to say it doesn't you know the sentences aren't as strong as they could be the writing isn't as you know as masterful as you could have made it but <clears throat> speaking to the other side of that just you know looking at the work 
it, it can be helpful if you try to write something very, very strong and you go back and you see all these errors. It's just helpful to know that, hey, no one saw it. No one... No one's ever going to see your early drafts. It won't matter if you do, you know, it takes two, two drafts, three drafts, 100 drafts. And the audience is never going to care. They're, all they're going to care about is just the final thing. So always going with that mentality of, 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 being, of being okay with just a little bit of improvement can be very, very helpful. And, and for me, that's, that's what I've been telling myself a lot today was just, hey, you know, it, it, it wasn't bad. What, what you wrote here wasn't great, you know, despite your attempts, what you wrote wasn't necessarily great. But now it's going to get better and it's going to improve. And again, just two, five, ten percent improvement here. Draft over draft over draft is going to be the thing that's going to make, you know, it, a good work great and an okay work good. Unfortunately... <laughs> Um, I, I, I've talked about kind of the limited time frame that I have, the sort of the sort of hero deadline. So I do have to be a bit more persistent. I do have to be a bit more I, I, I do have to be a bit more uh, critical in a sense because I don't necessarily know if I have the time you, you know I mean, for, for this project to, to put in you know five, you know four or five more drafts on, on each of these projects. I don't know. I mean I, I've given my deadlines before. they're a bit arbitrary, but still you know it, it, there's, there is some sort of external thing. There, 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 there are basically at least you know people waiting for at least tarot. You know what I mean? So it's tough. It, it, that's that's sort of the challenge you have to deal with is just the general real world time constraints. But if you don't have that, if you if, if your deadlines are just arbitrary, being okay with maybe taking a little longer could be very very beneficial. Um, you, you know, goals are fine, but don't feel like you have to stick to them. You you can adjust them and make sort of adjustments as you go along with the process.